So I opened up this, this tab here called room templates. And we talked about the fact that there's room data and that there's item data. We talked about images and documents as well. Let's go back to this concept of templates because it's an extremely important aspect inside of Dorofus. And that is the ability to plan and design using templative or type-based items or objects. So in this department right now, I have a dental department. And if I sort my room and name, it's going to organize these. And I can look at this and notice there's a bunch of, of rooms that are all the same. Rather than go through and fill out the room data for each of these rooms one by one, I have the ability to simply right click on there or I could do it from the ribbon at the top. And I can say, add all that data from a template. Now I've already done that. Um, if you look at it right here, it says from a template. I'm gonna kind of scroll over here. You'll see it sees it, it says from multiple templates. And one of these I changed to say, well, instead of being from 35, we'll have it derived from 35. And so let's look at like what that means. So if I go to template 35, I'm gonna open up one of these rooms and you'll notice it has the name automatically gets populated into it. If I go to the room data tab, the, the description of that room gets populated into it. Design building requirements, there's wall monitor permit that automatically comes from the template. It says from the template. If I try to check or uncheck any of these, I can't and that's by design because the template is controlling that. So if I wanted to go through and edit those Oh, uh, let's just see real quick how many rooms there are. Um, if I wanted to edit those, those rooms real quick, um, those, those six rooms, or seven rooms, sorry, six rooms, um, those six rooms, I would just edit the template once, and they would all get the update. Now, you'll notice this one that I mentioned earlier is derived, and so what's the difference here? This is your one-offs. As architects and designers, we love to, to say that we're typology or typology-based design, but then we like to break our own rules all the time or immediately into design. So we may start in early programming planning with different typology based rules, but then as we actually get into the project, we sit down with the owners, we have user group meetings and there's changes that are made, we can go through and make exceptions. So if I go through to this one, you can see down here, there's little red dashes here. And what it's saying is this is based on room template 35, but everywhere where you see a red is where we're deviating from that a little. So if I click on this room, then it says in here, it says, okay, well, this protection right here, originally the, the value was blank, meaning there was no more protection required for a door in that room. On this one-off one, we added re a requirement for protection. Or if we went to the electrical power here and we, we hover in here, it's gonna say, well, the original requirement for the outlet was just one. We changed that to 14 in this one. So that's, that's the idea of how we can look at this um, uh, derived versus, versus based on a template. Um, one other thing we're going to talk about, because you'll notice these red tabs, I'm going to double click on one of these rooms. We'll do this derived one as well. And that is I can go through here and I can click on and change the logs, or not change the logs, view the logs, and we're going to hit OK here. Uh, it popped up on my other screen, I apologize. And we're going to view the logs for every single change that has ever occurred in this room from the beginning of this database till today. And this is going to be a pretty big log because this database is probably four or five years old. Um, that I've been utilizing, and I have a screen popped up somewhere on here that I cannot get to. There we go. All right, and so this is the logs right here. So this is generating a log saying, okay, since the advent of this project to today, this is every change that's ever occurred in this database. And it will show the property of where that has occurred, what the old value was, what the new value was, when that occurrence changed, and who it was that changed it. So this is showing the logs that I mentioned early on, uh, and showing all the different ways we could filter it, show me all the changes that occurred yesterday, or show me just what's, what's occurred today, and I, it should pop up with nothing because I haven't made any changes to it, that's correct. Um, and, and this is very big brother-ish. If you're a BIM manager, this is very powerful to try to figure out what's going on in a project and why there are changes. But if you're a project manager, if you're a planner, this is extremely useful to sit down with your clients. And you can sit there and go, well, what's going on with the, with the, the budget? Why is it going over? Well. Back in June, this was the equipment we had in a project. Now in August, after 14 user groups meetings, it's, it's got up by this. Um, we can also use it during user groups. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna create a change list. Um, and actually, we're gonna not, yeah, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say show log. Uh, I can just hit it. Give me one second here, I think I canceled this. We're going to hit it here. It says start a change list. And I'm going to say create a new one called, um, it's the hardware uh, set meeting for the doors. Um, you know, 
whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and we're going to come here. I could add some notes to what this is. And I'm going to say, okay. And what it's saying is it's saying, although we track and log everything in this database, during this particular meeting, and now that you've started this change list, we're going to bracket these in a special bucket so that in the future, if you want to see those changes, you can find them really fast. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, well, let's go to the door hardware tab. And we're going to go through and we're going to make some changes. And I could do this to a template. Um, I'm going to just do it to this room. I'm going to remove some of the requirements here. Uh, I'm going to add a requirement for no window. And I'm going to hit save. And then I could stop the change list. What I'm going to do is just jump into the logs. And we're going to hit, um, and I hit no, and I should have hit yes. So give it one second, unfortunately. Sorry about that. I'm running multiple screens on here. Yeah, that's, it says no, because it's going to take a little while to, to render that. Unfortunately, that was not a good thing to do during the presentation. Well, that's running. We'll come up. Oh, there we go. All right. So this has come back in. Um, and what I'm going to do is rather than try show the log, which is showing everything, which is why it took so long, um, I'm going to come in here and say, let's go to that hardware set meeting on doors that we had and show me what changed during that meeting. And so there it goes. So it goes through. It says, these are the changes we made. These are the old values. These are the new values. This is when it was changed. I could export this to an Excel document, uh, forward this to everybody and say, hey, although everything's already tracked in the database and we're all on the same page, I'm, I'm also sending you these notes of what happened during this meeting because these are some significant changes. So you could email this out to everybody and now they have, have an overview of what just occurred. Or maybe you just inform a certain group of team members. So that's another kind of expansion on the, on the logs. And we've talked about templates and we've applied templates. We've got this database. And we talked earlier about how it can push and pull from Revit. Let's jump into Revit and let's talk.